The Wednesday Week is sponsored by the Riverside Cafe, new outside bar now open on match days. gentlemen and a very warm welcome to the wednesday weekly sheffield wednesday podcast i'm terribly sorry first of all ladies and gents for our absence but we shall blame mr marriott how are you james <laughs> hey look we had a few injury problems it's a difficult time of the season you know we've uh we've, we've had to battle through but we're back that's the important bit we are back and how are you my friend I'm very good. I'm very good. Very good. Uh, I was a bit nervous about tonight. It's a while since we've done it. So I've had five beers before we uh, started. So, uh, you know, Christ knows what's going to happen from here on in. <laughs> it's going to be one of those evenings. Um, speaking of which, you're Victoria, my darling. How the devil are you? I'm all right, my lord. How are you? You don't sound very all right, Vic. Are you not happy to be back amongst us? Oh, I, yeah. I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing. Yeah. <laughs> sound like it. Last <laughs> oh, nine yeah. at night after... A... 80 hour week so far. Yeah, I'm listening. No, I'm excited, my lord. I missed you all very much. Set down fudge. Yeah. Hey! Well, Hiya. you never Damn are you? Yeah, never you. <laughs> I'm all right. How's it going? I'm with a... My apologies, See, actually, I'm not. Actually, I'm a pro. See what I did there? See what I did? Yeah, yeah you made, it, I... made a lovely little segue there, See didn't you? Did, See what I did? I See what I did, bro. Because I, uh, I, I've been asleep, uh, not because I was tired, because I watched the, uh, the trailer for Spider Man. And the uh, not Magnificent Seven, and the Justice League, and uh, they were both quite <laughs> boring. They made it look awful. They made it look like a big boys in boots smashing, grabby load of old nonsense. So um, that's exactly what I... you want from your Marvel films, or being. That's well, exactly what you need. It makes me feel like I want to move on to grown-up films. Do you know what wait, I mean? Like wait until they've got the Wednesday Week Seven on. Oh, that'd be ace. Absolutely <laughs> amazing. And uh, <laughs> our final week of this week, uh, Richie or Bean, I'm the you. We'd never get seven of us on here, but I'm I'm fine. Thank you very much, my lord. How are you? To be fair, I don't actually think there's seven of us. Is the unless Beastie there could is a there is oh, seven of us. Yeah. yeah, but one of us is a secret silent part. Oh, see, all oh, right, okay. Uh... <laughs> secret six. <laughs> Can six. you tell we're, we're filling seven. already, ladies and gentlemen? We're filling already, and we're only two minutes in. <laughs> it's done well. <laughs> Uh, right then, ladies and gents, let's crack on with some Sheffield Wednesday news, shall we? First of all, ladies and gents, let's have a little waffle about our uh, international escapade, shall we? Because it's been, uh, it's it's been nice, and then it's been lovely, and then it's been bloody wonderful, hasn't it? Well, 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 yeah. I mean, there was. Uh, let, let's talk about Scotland, for example, where uh, Gordon Strachan, being the much maligned Scotland manager. <laughs> uh, seems to have got one thing right and not play any of the Sheffield Wednesday players. <laughs> they, got first, they got their first win in a long time and uh, didn't play Rhodes, Bannon and or Fletcher, uh, which, I, uh, which I found funny. But when they did get a run out on the pitch, um, yeah, they weren't winning. So, uh, well done, Gordon Strachan. In fact, I say, even Gordon Strachan has managed to realise that we're missing something from the middle of the park and going forward. And he's rubbish. <laughs> Bless him. Um, and of course, we, we can't go any further without mentioning the legend that is. Big <laughs> what a bullet that was. What a bullet. And then he... And he, he yeah, like, we should give him a bullet. That, oh, I'll show you. <laughs> and then he, he, like, kissed his badge and did some sort of, like, Nazi salute to the stand. And he, yeah, I, oh, th- I thought that when I saw that picture. It was, it was a bit was wrong, a, didn't it? Yeah. It was a bit Decanio-esque, wasn't it? Yeah, but, yeah. But how nice of him to think about his country of Kosovo shortly after finishing playing for the Austria under 21s. Or Yugoslavia. Oh, you have to spoil it. Oh, you have to spoil it for I'm him. Just it's, it's saying, been I'm absolutely just saying. Absolutely wonderful. He's brilliant. And I'm he very, will be very proud in of him. I will give him a big, books. A big I think adult it's... snuggle for that, my lord. A big adult snuggle. <laughs> <laughs> that's quite commendable. That's, that that's where we drink beer at the same time. <laughs> a lot of people were clamouring for his, for his recall uh, after his first goal in March. First goal of the season. It's took him to March to get it. What's, what, do yeah. we, what do we recall yeah. that for? Oh, Sorry, I'm it about him. I don't like him. Oh, go away. He, he hadn't played. He hadn't had a chance. 
<laughs> I, I'm just not, that's not break, not, not filled your footballing tank, Richard. Are you not ready and rare in the going? I'm still as pissed off as I was about the other Friday. <laughs> after what I want to watch that. I think, I think we might be losing Rich. <laughs> I, th- I think he's. <laughs> Sorry, the happy clap. I'll get back to happy clapping Rich shoot soon. <laughs> But no, I think the Dave News is absolutely fantastic. He will go in the history books as the first goal scored for Coffee Soil <laughs> in open play. After they have scored a penalty before, haven't they? Uh, but no. Sorry, sorry, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he goes again. Sorry. sorry do, you know, do you know what, my lord? If he never ever plays for them again, he will have equaled, get this, equaled Francis Jeffers's England record. Yeah, <laughs> he will. So I think, therefore, just as good, if not better. Was it genuinely <laughs> the first goal that they scored from open play ever? Yes. Even in friendlies against other really rubbish teams? Yes. God, they're terrible, aren't they? Well, they've only been a country they for five work. minutes, haven't they? I've just found out tonight. So they were terrible until the game Davies starts. And as soon as Davies yes. starts, that's it. They're off. They're oh, running. my God, right. yes. What a set isn't, fight, fireworks. <laughs> isn't he Austrian, though? Are we avoiding no. yeah. the elephant in the room here? He was born in Yugoslavia. Davies is confused in situation. Has he He's ever been there before? Country. Well, he was born there, wasn't he? So, yeah. He can't go there. He's old, old. He? Well, it depends whereabouts in Yugoslavia he was born. Because James, James, I, hold I, on. Every March the 17th, what do you claim to be? Well, I am a Drunk. quarter Irish on that day. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. So, oh. so therefore... <laughs> I have, at least be I've been to Ireland twice. He was born in Yugoslavia. But it might have been <laughs> another part of Yugoslavia that's not it's now Christina. there. There we go. Yeah, James, James Marriott, mm. are you suggesting that a footballer is selected to play for a lower <laughs> a lower country just so he gets an international call up? Are you suggesting oh, that, yeah. he, <coughs> that, <coughs> that he is in the he is in the same echelons of Clinton O'Morrison and Sean O'Scannell? <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're suggesting? <laughs> what, 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 who was a guy that, that that played for Ireland for years, but was, had actually got no link whatsoever? Is it Tony Cascarino? Was that's it? The one. Yeah, that's the yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When not... you listen to him on Talksport, he's like, "Oh, I told you what's going on. He's full practice on Talksport." Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, you, know, you, you, you can hear the like fiddles Irish. in the background. Kieran West has not got the strongest West Irish video. accent, has he? Yeah, he sounds like proper from like Blackton. At least he's got an Irish grandma or something. Cascarino got nothing. He just skanked But it. John Sheridan sounded like that. John yeah, Sheridan sounded like he was from Manchester. So I think that's just the, the other Irish accents that people don't tend to notice as much. Um, but no, I don't care what any of you say. I think Dave has been absolutely marvellous and I learned to bits. And congratulations, Dave. Yeah, yeah. On but not only did yeah, yeah. he play, play for the under-19, under-20s, under-21s for Austria. So, completely <laughs> right. Oh, Rich, we're losing you again. <laughs> and, then, and then Julie Andrews came in and sang a few songs carrying a wicker basket <laughs> and he moved to Kosovo. <laughs> Oh, bless him. Uh, but yes, but apart from all that, uh, obviously, as uh, Victoria mentioned there, Mr uh, Westwood is in goal this evening for Ireland, so we, we don't know a little of that yet, but I'm sure he's going to be absolutely marvellous, isn't he? Let's face it. And they'll well, be like, uh, Mr could, Westwood, could... how's your game going? Oh, I really good, I really enjoyed it, I had a really good game. <laughs> uh, bloody phony. <laughs> Just like you, Marriott. Oh, hey, oh, no, 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 what have I got to do with though? it? <laughs> I'll tell, tell you what, though, after all this, I thought I thought he was Albanian. Oh, nice one. I, I, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah Kieran Westwood. Albanian. And, and his big, thick Albanian. I do, I do a real good goalkeeping job. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I'm pretty sure that he was Albanian was when Albanian. we signed him. <laughs> and, the, and then did he change to being Austrian and then now he's Kosovan? Is that what it is? I yeah. thought it was Austrian, then Albanian, and now Kosovan. Right. All right. it doesn't well, stay tuned for that, kids. I was just going to Google it, but all it's bringing up is macadamia nuts. So oh, don't start with that. Oh, God, <laughs> please don't with that. Uh, and of course, as we said, that our one true Englishman has uh, has been off and, and scored again, hasn't he, Mister Hurst? Mister Lovely. Lovely George has uh, popped one in uh, for his England team as well, which is absolutely fantastic. So uh, all in all, I think we've been doing a quite a good showing on our international fronts, haven't we? Does it excite you when George Hurst pops one in? <laughs> oh dear <laughs> James, is James are? Is that where we are? <laughs> when when, when have we ever not been James there? Drink. <laughs> I've, had, I've had five drinks Does that mean it's on £3.60 an hour? Like, is that what we're actually paying him? 
Uh, no, because well, he's now on his first um, uh, his, his proper contract. Well, now. then he's not an apprentice, is he? Is he? Well, he was at the beginning of the year, yeah, which is why he now not, has now the is he, He's not learning to sell wood. He's not making Rolls Royce up partway. He's not doing out. Why are you being so argumentative tonight? Like What's wrong with you? Bacon, isn't it? I don't know. I think I'm just really tired and grumpy. I'm sorry. I'll shut up. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. drive around there. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I, I think it's shut your home out. He's, he's doing what. He... <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! We cut that bit out last time, Victoria. We'll uh, we'll not do it again. Um, <laughs> but no, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Mr. Harris is pulling up some major, major trees. The only thing is, fingers crossed, uh, we can keep him out the Wednesday. Um, right then, ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to some other Sheffield Wednesday news now, guys. Has been a wonderful competition run by the club for the third kit, and that is now being chosen. Uh, Mr. Carl Nuttall has won the um, the third kit choice. Um, it's a it's a white little number with yellow shorts and uh, hooped white and yellow socks. What do you guys think about this? Well, is it, what, is, it, is, it is it yellow or is it gold? Because I think is the point of it it's not that gold. it's supposed to be gold because it's our anniversary centenary. Yeah. Centiversary. It's not a golden thing. anniversary, though, is it? Yeah, what do you get for 150 years? What, what's what's the kind of you know like you get gold? Even Barbara and Bill have made that. <laughs> 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 They're pushing it. My mum and dad, they've not even made their 150th. I was going to say, married for 150 years, does that not mean you're just going to be in, you know, medical science? That's your medical <laughs> science anniversary. What is an imprisonment? Just shout <laughs> bone. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> but yes. But the bone kit anniversary, itself. darling. Here's a bone. But yeah, the kit but... itself. I, I like the kit. And yeah, I think it is supposed to be gold, given that it's our anniversary and that's what it's for. Um, I think the design was great. And if I remember, Carl himself was um, was putting a lot of designs on there, wasn't he? He put a yeah. fair few out and a lot of them garnered. Because I think he'd already won, essentially, before it even... Uh, before the... Uh, the verdict was met because I think we'd all gone, yeah, we quite like this. And somebody, you know, somebody who knows what's going on would have looked around Twitter and gone, actually, this one's quite popular. Let's look at this. And in true Sheffield Wednesday, no, in not true Sheffield Wednesday fashion, very surprisingly, the response has actually been quite good, hasn't it? Have you seen? Have you seen? It's some been of the really responses? positive, hasn't it? It's it is, it's a really nice kit. It is. It is a nice kit. I have. One or two issues uh, with the release of this kit. The first oh, one was... Ha- no, no, no. And, and it's not a massive issue either. The first it's one... It's not leopard print. <laughs> is um, how Sheffield Wednesday fans managed to manipulate it into a chat about how the greatest kit was 1991. That was always my... Uh, that was always my favourite. That You know what I mean? Yeah, it's nice. But what about the bloody 91 away kit for away kit this year? How, how, how did we get there? It, you know... Is, is, is this kit? Do you like it or not? If not, get in the bloody bin. And then the uh, the second the second issue was uh, what's the stars for? Are we for, now for league title victories? Are we now Huddersfield mm. Town? It's right though, isn't it? We are we are entitled to have four yeah. stars and, and yeah, 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 Huddersfield yeah. do it, and who else does it? Forest they do it. Ah, that was European Cup, so isn't it? It's a bit. Yeah, they've got two European Cups. Oh, I mean, we've, you know won, I mean? we've won a few of them, surely. Is it four of them that we've won? I reckon we've won four of them as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Forest have won two, that means we've won four minimum, surely. <laughs> do you think the fact that it's an all white kit is it? Do, do you think there's an element that might have picked this just to put the idea in our heads? Because you're not going to pick an all white third kit if you're going to have a blue and white striped home kit, are you? Because it's a bit similar to having. Uh, 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 you know, a, 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 a white home kit. It's it's too similar. Um, is this put in our heads just to make, us, to make us realise the fact that blue and white stripes are gone now? We've got to get used to that. He said that though, didn't he? He said that he doesn't like blue and white stripes. Yeah, and he said that he doesn't day, like them, but he said, he said that if people want it, then he'll bring them back. Yeah, but I'm not being funny, but if I, if I put £100 million or whatever into a club and then said... I don't like blue and white stripes. Everyone went, well, we do. We pay £500 a season. I'd say get in the bin. <laughs> get in the bin. Uh, this is tough <laughs> shit, mate. I'm having it pink. Just... Leopard print for fudge on the sleeves. Yeah, in it. In it. Or t- we'd like I a red like coat it. printed on. Yeah, just like a little red coat logo on the, well, on the, on the sleeves <laughs> or something. Apparently, having checked the internet, what you get for your 150th 
anniversary. So you know, like you know, one year is paper and whatever. Gold is gold and fifty, whatever. Uh, one hundred and fifty is is nature. So we could have had one that was oh. just like you know a grass Bones. effect or something like Nature. that and then we'd never get given offside if we had a grass effect kit the linesman <laughs> won't be able to see us i think it's a genius idea am i going daft or have we had some sort of like grass print kit before we had one that looked like a celtic kit which was yeah one. yeah that was reverse, really Cel like. reverse celtic wasn't it but yeah yeah didn't I we agree. have a goalkeeper kit that was like green and like black that looked like grass am i going mental am i going mental I, I, seem to remember, I, I seem to did. remember Chris Woods in a similar-ish kit yeah. with lots of different colours yeah. on it. Yeah, it didn't look mm. like grass, though, did it? It did to me. <laughs> it did it to what kind of grass you I, like. I, oh. I, 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 I was going to say, I think, I think you've been smoking grass. So, yes, <laughs> uh, I, I, if, if, if he wants to get away from stripes, I have no qualms with that because I don't think they're nice. However... I know that a lot of our fans are a big fan of Stripes and a short break away from them, I quite like. You know what I mean? It's nice that we pulled away. And if we do go back to Stripes, I'm not going to moan about it. However, I would one year just love to see us return back to that 1960s um, blue with the white sleeves. I, I'd love to just see that one year because that, that is our kit. You know what I mean? Well, I don't know where Stripes came from or why we're bothered with Stripes and why all of a sudden we're, we are a Stripes club. I, I, you know, we are blue with white sleeves and that's what we should be. And, you know, I want them back. I enjoy it. Can I ask a quick question, though, that I saw on Twitter? Because I clicked on the Sheffield Wednesday tweet to, like, zoom in on the picture. So it brought up all the replies below. And a lot of leads and blunts were, come, like, laughing at us, saying, oh, how Tim Pot, the fans designed their third kit. Is it Tim Pot? I don't know. Would we laugh at someone else for doing the same thing? If no. Sheffield United I, I, and Leeds I, honestly... did something like that. I honestly think it's one of the nicest designs really for a kit really. that we've had in years. Yeah. I, I, I really don't like really it. give a toss who designs any... it. I've I've seen fan designs on the looks... internet before and thought they're better than our actual kits. So why the hell not yeah. use one of them? Why the hell not let fans design it? If it was rubbish, then but yeah, would we, I, I would, would appreciate. Would we have a wallet someone else for doing it? But why? What what's the laugh at about it? I don't I don't understand what's funny well, about I it. I don't I don't know, James. That's I'm just I'm just throwing the question what, out there. It's a panel show. Let's say, let's say, let's say a, a young child designed it, you know, like, in, like crayon, and draw a picture of mummy and daddy in those stick figures that kids yeah. do where the, where the arms come out the heads and that sort of thing. Then, yes, that would be pretty piss poor tin pot. However, this is a well designed thing he's put through. He's obviously used a great app for it or a great program on his computer for it. And, it, and, it's, and it's excellent that, uh, you know, I think it's a great, a great little touch. But yes, Stanford, if it did. Stanford. There was an option to print out your own outline of the kit and colour it in with pencils and um, some of us it? some of us may have done that and <laughs> didn't get done so <laughs> sore point, well, sore point the, li fudge. the little stick was it, was, did it look like grass I coloured it very neatly and I took a photo did, of it and emailed it and I didn't win so was it, was it inside Joke the coffee. lines it was I always colour inside the lines fudge and that's something <laughs> wild no I just look I love the ideas of you of you of, the, of you suggesting a kit and it have those just a circle with two arms coming out of the ear holes and two legs coming out the bottom of it and just like four of them and like you know hey! Bill, Barb, me and Al, you know what I mean with all those box houses <laughs> with the door in the middle and smoke and coming from the chimney. A dog yeah, with two circles dog. and four sticks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why don't we pick that one? If I'm perfectly honest, I mean, don't get me wrong, Carl's done a cracking job and everything, but. White and gold, it is a little bit lead, isn't it? Well, I, you said this on Twitter. Where'd you get that from? Because Le Leeds... You're a little like bit lead. Like... Oh, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you? I don't get, I don't get that. It's, it's... Leeds well, originally... is just yellow, very slight yellow trim, hasn't it? Whereas this has got lots of yellow on it, or gold. Leeds was originally blue and yellow, weren't they? And then they had this crazy owner back in the day, <clears throat> surprisingly enough, uh, who went to white because... He liked a particular Spanish club, which is why I Leeds have always had that little bit of yellow and blue in their kit somewhere. And this, to me, just smacks a little bit of that. But apparently, it's not yellow. So I'm happy to be proven wrong on that. It's gold, which makes all the difference on that. But no, I think Carl's done a cracking job. Uh, much better than I could have done with my crayons out. So, uh, yeah, fair play to the chap. Well done, that man. Um, speaking of well done that man, it's that time of the month again. Man of the month and Mr. Wallace has uh, claimed the rights to it this time. Can we have any arguments with this, boys and girls? 
No, 100%. The credit it deserves. Brilliant. Yeah, I, I must admit, I, I kind of... When you're trying to fit everywhere in that midfield like we were at one point before we got a shed load of injuries, it was like, oh, you know, what is 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 McMahon going to come in and we're going to drop Wallace? And every time you thought about that, he scored and had a great game. And yeah, can't knock him for it. 100%. Well, listen, I, I've got to. I, when I, I was looking on is. Twitter at uh, a good few uh, posts about Ross Wallace uh, about two months ago. We were making Callum McManam amount to be one of the greatest footballers in the history of Sheffield Wednesday. Get McManam on, bloody McManam! What we're bothering with Ross Wallace for? Bloody, bloody McManam! Get him out there! Bloody, bloody rubbish! Wallace. Bloody rubbish! What's the bloody doing? And and I thought, well, Callum McManam is you know a, a Wigan athletic reject. Do you know what I mean? I, you know, it, it's not exactly a stellar signing. I think it's a steady one. Don't get me wrong, but. Well, you know, Ross Wallace scores goals. He, he, he he's great in that attacking four-five-one that we play. What's you know, why why are we blowing smoke up Callum McManaman's ass? He's just an impact player for the last ten minutes. I think the thing with Callum McManaman is he's a very 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 good player, but I think he has very 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 little discipline, doesn't he? That's Which we've seen on, true, on yeah. numerous occasions. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And it, it, it's not just a case of running around and, 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 and jumping into people and that kind of thing. But it's uh, I think maybe holding position and things like that, which is something that. Wallace does so incredibly well. He's such a professional because he is a, a chap of a certain age now, isn't he, Mr. Wallace, in, in footballing terms? But one thing he has got, which we've seen time and time and time again, is is calmness on a football pitch. It's like he's bored of it sometimes, which is why he comes up with all this nonsense that he does on the football pitch as well. And I think that's why Carlos loves him so, so much because he will follow out Carlos's instructions to a T, whereas Mr. McManaman might not shall we say. I, I read a really interesting piece on the Owls Alive website earlier, which was a bit like, it was a bit like a podcast in writing. They basically had a chat and then oh, just, hmm. yeah, kind of written it all down. Um, but it was quite good. And they made a really good point, which is if you take Hutch out of the equation of the players that, that really shone last season, um, there's only Wallace that's actually hit the same level as last season again this season. And I think that's quite true. I think everyone else has, has struggled a bit to hit the heights of last season. I think Hutch probably has, but he's been in and out and obviously, you know, he's 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 you know not, not played as many games as we'd as we'd want in that favoured position in midfield. What Wallace is the player that's still consistently done it game in, game out, and he's had you know, you could probably count on one hand the number of times when Wallace has played and you've thought, oh, he's been rubbish, he's been terrible. Um, so I think that says a lot, actually, and, and I've not, never really thought about it like that before, but I thought that was a really good point. Absolutely. I mean, there's, there's always the, the usual sort of um, candidates as well, isn't there? But I don't think we can disagree with this one whatsoever. Um, right, then, ladies and gents, let's crack on, shall we? Um, it's been a bit of a, a, a strange one for, for Wednesday news because there's been bits and bobs and dribs and drabs and, and bits and, and things and, and other things. Boots and cats and boots and, boots and cats. cats. and boots and cats. <laughs> one, one thing that I did notice that, that sort of popped out this week is that uh, Mr McGoogan pulled on a Wednesday shirt for the under-23s, which was... Odd more than anything else because we've not seen uh, a hair, hiding a hair of him for, for months and months and months and months and months, and then all of a sudden there he is with the under 23s. Apparently, he has requested a game and he got 60 minutes against Cardiff the other day. Now, do we think this is just so we can get him fit to move him on, or do you think Carlos is thinking, oh, it's getting a bit close to the bone with these injuries and things, or what do I, you think there's any rhyme or reason? Nah, I, I don't think Carlos gives a, a toss about it, does he? I think. Um, I, I think uh, there's, there's probably something telling in the fact that so we can play three overage players within the starting eleven. Um, Lewis McGugan was told in August that he was not part of the plans for this season. It's taken him until March to turn around and say, well, actually, could I have a run out for the academy team? What, what's that like? Eight months? It's taken him to um, to yeah. actually ask whether or not he could play a, a game of football. In all that time, he's been quite happy to just rock up to training and do pretty much nothing. Um, so I think that's quite re revealing. Also quite revealing is the fact that apparently he wasn't very good. He had a fairly ineffective game. <laughs> he's, not, he's not kicked a ball in five months, to be fair. Like, you know what I mean? It'd be like coming back from injury. Oh, what's up with Magoogan this week? Oh, he's coming back from the pie-eating contest he did at Christmas. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Not shifted that holiday weight that he got rid of. You can imagine him being bloody rubbish. Bloody yeah. hell. <laughs> um, but listen, are we going to get to some football and talk about how bloody rubbish we've been, or are we just going to gloss over that? No, we're no. going to go. Anyone want a macadamia nut? 
Oh, shit. <laughs> We're going to ignore the results because we haven't been great, but we know the reasons why. So we're going to try and stay positive, and in a little while we'll, we'll look fudge. forward to the rest of the season. Oh, do you, you want sure? to just have a moan about how bad we've been, Fudge? It's, it's not so much a moan. It, it's a moan. And, 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 when you, you know, start I've... a sentence with that, it's definitely a moan. It's like, it, I'm not it, being it, funny, but or I'm not racist, but... <laughs> it's a big grumble for Sheffield Wednesday for the last couple of weeks. <laughs> no, I, I, t- I tell you what it is. Uh, for the last few weeks, you know, I've been waxing quite lyrical about our form since November. And every four or five games, we throw up a massive result. Like, when we did it again recently with Norwich. And when we when we played Norwich the other week, we thought, this is it. We've turned the corner. We're spanking teams. We're bloody brilliant. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, but we stuck that in, you know, in between losing against Brentford at home and then losing to dirty, bloody Leeds. And then we smashed Norwich and we're like, yeah, we're great. Look how great we are. Wee. And then we drew to Burton. Then we lost to Villa. Then we lost to Reading. We're 21st in the form table. What's going on? It's bloody rubbish. Do you, do you know what? Over the games against Brentford, Burton and uh, Reading, we get found out when a, a team come and park the bus and put 10 men behind the ball. And I thought Reading did that to a certain extent. They broke really well. Um, and we haven't got an answer to it. We haven't got a plan B when that happens. When somebody defends and parks a bus, we're like, Ugh, what do we, we have, do? But it's just not available at the moment. The answer to that is Kieran Lee. He's, yes. he's a terrier. I, th- I think we, we do miss Kieran Lee. Still we should be re- goals we we've it, seen. Surely we've got enough quality in that squad to still be able yeah. to win games. Absolutely. Look, I, don't, look, I don't think we have. Don't, don't you think we though, saw it against England? We, we, I, I just, if a team parks the bus, it's very difficult to break them down. It is, but, uh, but, but the one person that is incredibly should, good at ratting in the box should have an answer to get in to, to create a bit of creativity. And we just it was just, Reading was just abject. I was just it wasn't abject. So we broad. created lots and lots of chances. We, we did had, at the end. T- in the we last ten minutes, yeah, it was, it was in the last ten minutes, ten minutes, and that's it. And Al Abzi was cross. brilliant. Al Abzi was absolutely fantastic that evening. We found our way to the goal on numerous occasions. And Al Abzi, Al Abzi won that game for Reading. Otherwise, and we'd have been looking at... If we'd have got anything out of that, we would have mugged them that yeah. game. I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry, Lord H. I know I'll normally back you up on this stuff, but that's nonsense because we <laughs> we didn't turn up until 80 it's minutes not, which that bit? game. Yeah. Right, we we Which were so- we were we were terrible for at least the first seventy five minutes of that game. We we could barely string a move together. We didn't threaten. We were flat in midfield. Uh, we, t- to be fair, our attackers were playing so deep to help out the midfield that was flat that when we came forward, we got no one anywhere near the uh, the final third anyway. Um, and it was only the last 10 minutes when we suddenly burst into uh, into life. And yeah, the keeper played a blind. On another day, we scored two two goals in the last 10 minutes and we win the game. And we think we've got out of jail you know, very well there. Um, but we didn't deserve anything out of that. And, and the fact what? that we threw a lot of them in the last 10 minutes doesn't really count for anything because we should have been doing that from from the moment that they scored, which was only like a quarter of an hour into the game, wasn't it? We, we should have... But I can only argue had, had one point at offer. once. We, the, One the, the swallow point... doth not make a summer, my lord. <laughs> but... And it was bloody rubbish. It <laughs> was bloody awful. Everything James has just said is 100% true. It yeah. was terrible. It was one of the worst games I've seen in I, ages at Hillsborough. I haven't got a positive it for it. Awful. I came away from that so blooming miserable. And my friend John, well, Alistair's friend John, but my friend John, really, uh, came back two hours after because he was parked on our road, so he was, like, stuck in traffic. And we put on Radio Sheffield, hoping for Carlos, and they kept playing the Carpenters. And it wasn't until about ten minutes in that I looked up and we were all sat around the table with, like, our heads in our hands, just slowly dying to the Carpenters <laughs> after watching that game. It was awful. It was absolutely dreadful. And there were no excuses for that. It was terrible. And, yes, it was a second-string side, but Mr Chancery was there that night because... I can see him from where I sit. And if that was me and I was watching 25, 20 million quids worth of my money, piss about on that pitch like they did. <laughs> I would be furious. It was shocking. It was absolutely dreadful. And you've just brought up really bad memories for me. And I'm going to go and well, I know. Well, I was, I was going to say at the start of this um, conversation, do we think that everything that needs to be said about the Reading game has already been said over the course of the last week and a half or yes. whatever? And and ultimately, you know, we, we've not actually, we've not talked about the Villa game on a podcast 
be, before now, have we? Because we, uh, we we didn't get to record one after that. But I kind of think with those two games, we, we lost at Villa and heads went down. And then uh, we all thought, well, Fulham are going to absolutely stuff Blackburn on Tuesday night. And of course, Luca Zhao pops up in the 94th minute or whatever and, and, and scores that goal. Um, and then... Sign him up. We obviously we lose to Reading, and we think, well, Fulham are going to absolutely stuff Wolves, aren't they? The day after, and and they go and, and they lose that game. Let's just view this as we've now played our final get out of jail free exactly, card. Yeah. We've run out of them now. Let's let's draw a line under the last you know, three four games where we've 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 not been up to it. The international break came at the right time. We, we've had a bit of time to regroup. We know we've got a couple of players coming back from injury. We're going to have a much stronger looking squad coming into. What what is going to be two very difficult games, which we'll talk about a bit later on. Um, but let's let's just forget all about it. Let's not bog ourselves down and remind ourselves of how. And it was a horrendous night. Let's make no mistake about it. It was a, it was a poor night. It was our worst performance of the season. It was it was poor. It was really poor. And I'm I'm one I'm I'm the one that's normally trying to find the positives to 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 use on the podcast. I was glad to be on holiday last week and and not be here if you did do a podcast because I was struggling. It, there was very little positive to take from that. So let's just write it off. I, I, let's just forget all about it yeah, and I let's agree. start fresh from think, from now because we're still more. sixth in the table. We are, we are. But I think the thing that really got me, and I normally come away, <laughs> and I will say, no, let's talk about let's Wolves away, about, James. Let's, let's talk about let's Wolves away. About the, when no, Vin, when I think, we finish speaking. I think, I think the thing that really got me was afterwards, a lot of the press said that we could have won it, and Carlos came out and said that anybody who was there could see that, could not disagree that we didn't deserve to win it. No, we deserve to win that and nobody can disagree. Well, I saw in disagree because I sat through it and it was absolutely shocking. And yes, yes, it was an awful like situation with players and whatever else. But like I said, the players that we had there were in theory good enough. And if they're not good enough, then we've got a major problem in the squad because they should be good enough to step up. You know, your McManamans, your whoever's should be good enough. Your Dave Jones and like they should be there and they should be ready to go. So I am hoping, like James has just said, that that is a complete blip and from now on we'll be fine, never will come back and it'll all be good. But there's no shine away from the fact that that was our worst performance of this season and yeah. probably of last season right. as well. It, it, it's the, not like the a the last word, is it? Yeah. <laughs> the, the point oh, that I didn't get to finish... You're all right, You're all right, Are you okay? Have you got a point to make there, Lord Hillsborough? Do you want there, me Lord to Hillsborough? the last word? Do you want? Yeah. Are you, are are you trying to? Do you want me to the last Shall I just finish this off now? Shall I just say, right then, let's move on to. <sighs> let's just stick an oh, advert in here, shall we? Rick's gone. Um, right. So uh, as I was saying, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, quite simply, Rich, we all mentioned about breaking teams down. We broke. Hey, you can down. all fuck off now. You can fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> we did break them down, but the keeper had a corking game. Rick, but we didn't deserve to win. Load we didn't of break shite. them down until what a load of 18 shite. minutes. <laughs> Alex. I'll tell you what, what, what game was it? We had Do you a know when we broke them Sunday. down? It was when we brought in a certain cos of an international. <laughs> that was the only time <laughs> we looked bloody let's, alive. Let's not pretend that he well, made any impact. Yeah, please, yeah. <laughs> right, okay, so there, there, was, there was one of the Friday night games we had on, and it was... Um, and one of the commentators Bloody said this, rubbish. Sheffield Wednesday start really slow and then they build into it as the game goes on, which is a statement I agree with a lot of the times. However, I will take take umbrage with you saying that uh, when teams come and park the bus, we struggle with it. Um, I think it's the other... Uh, well, yeah, I think we do. When teams come and have a go at us and they want to try and play football around us like Norwich, we're so quick on the counter, we absolutely smash them to bits. And that's what we do. And I like that. But surely we need... We, David Jones is an average player. Callum McManaman is an average player. That's why they let him go. You know, it's as simple as that. And we've, we've bought all the strikers in the league thinking we're just going to piss goals. But we need to get the ball up to them. And we need more depth in the middle uh, across the entire band of the midfield. And our full backs just aren't good enough. And, and, and to some extent, so is our centre backs because we've got no depth in that whatsoever. Let's you know. Let's stop buying strikers for a minute, because when Hooper comes back and all, we've got a big issue there. We've got a massive problem um, of where to try and keep all these players happy. Now, for example, with Barnsley and Rotherham coming up, these are going to be 
um, local derbies where it's it's uh, it's uh, hell for leather and the form book goes out the window and whatever other cliche you can say. But we need somebody who's going to play on that last man and sniff him in like Gary Hooper does. But I don't think we're going to play him because we've got we spent all this money on Jordan Rhodes, who who hasn't just found the form that we, we know he's capable of. And I'm not saying, you know, he's, he's, he's bloody rubbish. What we're doing, playing him, is crap. We've wasted money. But he does need to bed in a little bit. And we need to work on his fitness. I hope that when he comes back after the international break from not playing for Scotland, that his fitness has returned. Um, That's all well and good and damn fudge, right? But if I gave you a bowl of angel delight and I didn't give you a spoon, <laughs> you couldn't bloody eat it, could you? Because he's not getting any service because they're absolutely shite out there in midfield without Barry they Bannon, are. without your Hutch, without your Kieran Lee, without your Fessy. So they unless are. he's got a spoon, he can't eat his angel delight. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's well, that's what I'm saying. Just stick your face in the bowl, one. What's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, no, but, that's yeah. what he's having to do. And look what's exactly. happening. And that's but, what I'm saying. Dave Jones is like, is like give, when there's not a, a dessert spoon available... Dave Jones is a, is one of those little kids' teaspoons. You know what I mean? He is. The, oh, I, think, I think you've been yeah. harsh on David Jones. I think he's been quite I good in the last two me, games. I, I think. I think. He's I, I think he's me. probably been our best player the, for the last couple of games. He plays the ball sideways and backwards, and yeah, I'm a big fan of keeping the ball. And they can't score if if they haven't got the ball. I am, but nobody's ever sat there and said that Gareth Barry is one of the greatest ever Premier League footballers. And I don't think he ever plays a ball forward in his life. And I think he's the Championship Gareth Barry. But no one ever said that we were buying him because he was going to cut through like you know the midfield like a, a knife through butter. That was never what he was brought in for, was it? He was brought in because we needed cover in that position for when Hutch can't play which is let's be fair a quarter of the season so we needed someone who's proven who can do that role well and I think that he it took him a little while to, to find his, his his feet with us there's no doubt about that but I honestly think he's been our strongest player against Villa and against um, Reading I agree strongest player against Reading that's like being you know world's best burglar <laughs> do you know what I mean world's best if, smoker if you were the, the world's fights. best burglar you'd be a rich man very very good <laughs> <laughs> Here's a question. Where would you find all of the following in one place? Chairs, tables, beer, Vic, James, more beer, Dickyow, Eddie, more beer, and the rest of the Wednesday week gang. That's right, it's the Riverside Cafe's new outside bar. All of your favourite lagers, ciders, soft drinks, and hand pump ales are now available outside. Come and see the gang and give it a try. The Riverside Cafe's new outside bar. Now open on match days. Right then, ladies and gents, so let's crack on then, shall we? Because we've got a couple of games coming up, and luckily we've got a couple of players coming back by the looks of things. Uh, did you guys happen to catch the uh, the Sky Sports interview with Carlos, where he was uh, speaking about our, our long-lost lovely players? I didn't see it, actually. I've heard a fair bit about it, but I didn't I didn't see it. Talk, talk me no, through it. What, what did he say? Well, Carlos very kindly um, <laughs> compared us with Barcelona. <laughs> I mean, the, the comparisons are obviously there. But he mentioned, obviously... Messi, Bar Messi. <laughs> he, he mentioned that if, if Barca was to lose their PK, which is our Tom Lees, they would struggle. Um, if they were to lose their um, their buskets... Oh, I'm hooked. so glad I was on mute because I'd just taken a really big swig of water there. <laughs> And it nearly went everywhere and he compared Tom Lewis to Pico. <laughs> um, he, he mentioned that if uh, if they lost their Messi, it would be like us losing our Fessy. Uh, Kieran Lee, our Iniesta, Hooper, our Suarez, and oddly... Um... <laughs> there's, there's, there's an E in Sheffield Wednesday and Barcelona, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the greatest one of all is if they lost their Neymar to our Ross Wallace, if you like, which he did say rather tongue-in-cheek. I think that's fair enough. I but think that's very agreeable. The point that Carlos was making is if Barcelona lost those players, um, they would struggle because they are their best players in that particular position, which we have done, which is why we have struggled. Um, but luckily, it looks as though uh, the majority of those players are coming down, and there's even been a glimmer of hope, a very small glimmer no, of hope, that Kieran Lee me. may well see a Wednesday shirt again before the end of this season. Well, well, that, that, that'd be huge, wouldn't it? I mean, the so am I right in thinking that it looks like Forestier is going to be back? Yep. Gary Hooper's going to be back. Mm -hmm. Tom Lee's will actually be back and fit enough to play. Yep. And Sam Hutchinson will be back? Absolutely. Right, okay. Well, I mean, that's huge. That's, that's, that's really big. At the moment. That's, that's really, really big. That's, that's I was why. behind Sam. You were indeed, yes. That's fine. 
He was going to train at 10 o'clock this morning, everyone. Well, no, 9 o'clock he was early. Oh, Sam. He, uh, he does double training, doesn't he? Just for the hell of it sometimes. Um, yeah, I mean, look, the, the, I said earlier on that the international break came at the right time and, and, and to kind of quantify that a little bit, I think that, you know, we've, we've had a few knocks and a few bruises. We've had players who you could tell are, are, are playing and in, in a different set of circumstances probably wouldn't be playing, but we've got no other option. Uh, we've got players that are maybe not playing quite in the right, right position uh, and players that are having to do uh, maybe a role that isn't ideally suited to them. So having our first choice players for, for those real key positions back uh, is, is, is huge. And, um, you know, it, it could be the thing that makes all the difference because we've got some really, really hard games coming up. You know, let's let's make no mistake about the fact that playing Barnsley and Rotherham when neither of them really have anything to play for is probably a worse scenario than if they were fighting for something in the same way that, that, that we are because uh, particularly Rotherham, I'm worried about the Rotherham game and I know it's daft because it's Rotherham and they are, you know, the one lead team in the league that are just not good enough to compete. But if, if Paul Warren has any sense at all, um, and he's a clever guy, Paul Warren, and he, he says to those players, look, you've been terrible all season, right? You've been absolutely awful. This is your one chance to go out and give the fans something, just something to take from, from this season. And they're going to go out and give absolutely everything that they've got. I'm hoping that they're still so crap that it won't make any difference but um these games are worrying me so having you know a, as close as we can be to a full strength squad i know kieran lee's not going to be back for these two and you know the idea that he might make it back for the last few games of the season could could end up still being being huge but let's worry about that as and when it, it comes up um but um yeah having having the majority of the squad back fit and ready to play that that is a huge big deal for us I don't think it can be underestimated just how much we've missed Kieran Lee. It really, really can't be, can it? And and if there is a, the smallest limit of hope, can you imagine if, if he just came back just as we squished into the playoffs? At that point, do you think he would fit back into the squad quite happily? Or would you guys leave him out? Because It's almost like Steve McLean coming back in the playoff final in 20, 2005, oh, isn't it? Oh, goosebumps, goosebumps! Yeah. Not, not really quite uh, the same, is it? No, it isn't. Not no, score no, a penalty. No. That so, shouldn't have been a penalty. It's not his 20th goal of the season. No, no 20 grand pocket. It's shit idea, really, wasn't but, it? But close enough. Close enough, Rich. Close <laughs> enough. It's good. It's all good. But would you guys play him? I, I, my answer to that would be I'll worry about that problem as and when it comes up. At the moment, I'm just thinking about Barnsley on Saturday, Rotherham on Tuesday. Kieran Lee's not going to be back for those two games. So, as far as I'm concerned, he, he might as well be yeah, two years away from fitness at the moment. It doesn't matter. Okay, okay. So, uh, Barnsley, first of all. Um, obviously, Barnsley are going rather nicely at the moment, and they do have their own dreams of maybe scraping playoffs, don't they? Uh, 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 we can dream, can't we? Uh, but we had a very tough time against Barnsley last time out, didn't we? And we were... I don't want to say lucky. We we worked hard, shall we say, to, uh, to to gain some points from that game, shall we say. Um, they are going to come out swinging, aren't they, Barnsley? Now, if, 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 if Carlos does do his let's defend for the first 10 minutes and let them puff themselves out, because I do think they're going to come out swinging, would you rather that happen or do you want to see them head on straight away? Do you want us to come out swinging and not Barnsley a little bit from the start? Let us dictate the pace. Yes. Always. Always. I I, I, I don't like this, like I alluded to earlier, this uh, this where we start slow. We should set the pace right for yeah, minute absolutely. one and say, this is it. If you want to sit back and defend, give it a go. Because no team can solidly defend for 90 no. minutes without one slip up, especially not bloody Barnsley. Do you know what I mean? I, I would stick Willow but front No team can solidly well. attack for 90 minutes either. I think yeah, one yeah, of the but... reasons Carlos does this is, is because teams do tend to puff themselves out slightly in the first 10 minutes when they're coming it's at not... us. And then, once they've puffed themselves out, that's when we attack. When we're falling I, I... down. Not great to watch, though, is it? Yeah, we, we, we've already conceded twice by the time we've started attacking, and it's not good enough because... As long as we... they've not got Al Habbadi or whatever he is in goal, then we're sound, <laughs> aren't we? Bloody hell. <laughs> Bloody rubbish! <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I like... Uh, fast-flowing, attacking, nice football. However, I am also not of the 
head up my arsenessness, if that's a, if that's a term, I'm just going to coin it. It is now. <laughs> um, that you uh, that there aren't times where you have to play shit kicker football. You do have to dig one out. You do have to grind hard. Uh, but what I want to see more of is banging the ball into the box onto JR's head. It needs to happen because that's what he's there for. He's an absolute battering ram of a human being. And we don't do it with Dave and we don't do it with Jordan Rhodes. And which kind of makes me think, what's the point in having them if we're not going to deliver to their strengths? Like, for example, um, Liam Palmer uh, doesn't do it enough. Morgan Fox doesn't do it enough. And to some extent, Ross Wallace doesn't do it enough, where they batter down uh, to the byline and whip one across. Uh, you know, it's old school football. There's a lot of nonsense spoken about tactics and recycling the ball and they're just making it too complicated run down to the byline cross one and then let the six foot three bloody bloke who's got a proven track record of smashing him in with his head smash him in with his head done see you later good night god bless fudge out fudge in absolutely fudge you get yourself down to those ball being and get those tactics did you mic out. drop at the end of that did you just throw yeah, him up across I, I... the room yeah, I did. I even did the uh, the hands on the lips like uh, Barack Obama did. I, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Muff drop. <laughs> <laughs> That's like something from Geordie Shaw, doesn't it? That? And, and do, you yeah. gra- do you guys agree as well? Do you think, would, is that what you want to see? Or are you happy for a patient game of football? Nope. I don't Not care. I'm listening to it on radio, so it'll sound shite. Whatever we just, I listen. just, <laughs> whatever we just need to come it. out and, and not let them dictate us. We need to dictate the game, get at them early, and just actually, can't we go up one nil up after two minutes or something daft like that? We don't do that. It'd be nice, not, wouldn't it? Just do that. Well, you do that just, every game I, if you could, couldn't you? I mean, that, that's like that's easy. Yeah, to say. I, we just don't. We just don't. I was. I've not. I'm really frustrated with it at the minute. I'm really struggling with it, and I, I put my head up my arse and ignored it for a. A couple of weeks, and I still feel pretty negative about it, which is not usually me because I'm. I am. You have to be sensible about it as well. If we're going to Barnsley and they're going to be absolutely baying, aren't they? They're going to be sat there clapping the forefingers together, baying, <laughs> absolutely. Hey, bane. that's my hometown you're talking about there. I've had. I've, a, I've, had, a, I've had another uh, finger <laughs> surgically. Uh... James, <laughs> don't tell people. But they are, that crowd Shara is Bale. going to be horrendous. It's going to be absolutely awful. And I, for one, wouldn't mind if the players sat back for the first 10 minutes, were sensible about the whole thing, and just to sort of get the feel and, and then maybe shut the crowd up. Maybe for the, the, the second 10 minutes, if you want. Because they are going to need shutting up that crowd, aren't they? Because it's going to be horrendous. Um, I don't know. I don't even know if they'll sell out for it. I don't. I don't know how into it their fans are because they're. I mean, they're they're charging their their own fans like thirty eight quid for tickets or whatever it is. Um, so it's some, something extortionate. Um, so I don't. I don't know whether or not it'll be a sellout. Um, this season's been. It's kind of turned into a bit of a damp squib for them. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're going to be up for it. There's no doubt about that. Um, I think if Sam Winall plays, that that could actually affect how Barnsley start the game because they'll want to. Uh, he's he's. I'm, I'm told he's hated by um, the, um, the the Barnsley team. They never liked him when he played for them, and they particularly don't like him now. He's not. Um, so um, you know, there, there could be something in that that they, they, they'll, they'll kind of you know want to stamp their authority on him a little bit. Um, be it literally or figuratively speaking. So I don't know. I'm I'm torn between the two of you. I can see it's completely what 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 Fudge is saying about us going out and and dictating the pace from from minute one. And I can also see the benefit actually in starting a little bit cautiously and uh, controlling the game that way. What I would say is that knowing Carlos the way that we do know Carlos, particularly this season, I think that the former is is probably unlikely, and that the latter is 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 more likely to be the kind of way that we'll we'll play it that we will start um and sit back a little bit and allow Barnsley to feel like they're dictating the play and that's when we'll then make our move and um and and you know do what we need to do i do hope so i do hope that carlos lulls them into a lovely false sense of security and then destroys them when all that lovely space is created on there and who do you think we're going to see up front if hooper is available and is fit and is lovely who would you like to see because i think we can say it's going to be a front two don't we um well i mean uh, for me I, i've said a few times on the pod the idea of hooper and Rhodes together is something that i find really exciting 
Um, whether it's the right game for it or not, I don't know. Um, I, I, I personally, I'd be tempted to go with uh, Rhodes and win all against Barnsley, and then maybe uh, bring Hooper in against Huddersfield um, and have Hooper on the bench against Barnsley. But that said, I, I you know, I, I, in any combination of those players I'd be quite happy with um, and I think particularly if Forestier is playing on the left um, then I, th I think you know we we should have confidence in those forward players that whoever of them that we it is that we play that they should be able to go out and do something yeah, there's a good argument for playing Sam Winnell isn't there against Barnsley he's gonna he's gonna want to make a point he's gonna want to go out and score he's gonna be fired up isn't he he should, yeah, he should be he anyway of course he is yeah when you say whoever James, do you mean that after no, I Dave's don't. You know, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'll take that as a no then, shall I? Um... <laughs> Let's stick McGugan uh... in the middle of the park as well, shall we? Why not? Yeah. Oh, and Sasso, is he, is he, uh, <laughs> can he play in this game? Let's stick him in defence. Oh, I get Sasso in. Yeah, when he, when he plays, he can duck. Um... Sorry, <laughs> negative, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, and I, I was thinking a similar sort of thing. Or there's there's two ways a Robin game could start. Now. We could start beautifully, and their fans could just be like rich, basically, just a full Rotherham full of riches. Or are they going to be paying for blood as well? Are they, are they just had enough this season? Do you think? I th Rotherham are a difficult. Rotherham are a, a potential banana skin for us because they came to Hillsborough and absolutely shut us down. They it went for a dodgy penalty decision. We'd have we'd have eked a nil nil draw out for that. It was the worst game of football I've seen in a long long time, and um, and rather than potentially, I've, uh, you really can just shut you down. And because we are pretty piss poor as it stands, um, at breaking a team down because you know we can't seem to do it. Uh, I think it's going to be a really difficult game, and all it needs is somebody to break, somebody somebody who can finish up front, which is what they've got. Uh, to come away with a loss on that day, it can happen, and it may happen. It won't happen. Mark my words. They're, they're <laughs> going to be fighting for that. They have literally got sod all to cheer about, apart from beating us. They still sing songs about beating us, and we don't care about them. It's just like some weird little stepbrother that you never see. You yeah. know what I mean? That just turns up every now and again going, I don't like you. Well, all right, thanks. <laughs> you know, thanks for that. See ya. Thanks, yeah. thanks for your feedback. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, so get in the bin. <laughs> I, 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 I agree with that. I think there's, there's some good points there that it is a potential banana skin. I, I kind of I keep going back to this thing in the back of mind where I think ev everything that we're saying shouldn't really matter because you look at our squad on, on 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 paper at least, and we should be able to go and beat the likes of Barnsley and Rotherham. With the situation that we're in right now, then Carlos should be able to say what he needs to say to them. To say to, to to get across the fact that you know this is we, we don't have room for any more slip ups now. This is this really is it. We're we're getting into the proper business end of the season, and you know if we if we uh, allow one more slip up, then someone will take advantage. We said earlier we've run out of get out of jail free cards yeah. now. That's it. We've got no more. We can't expect any more favors from Lucas Zhao popping up and scoring goals for Blackburn against someone. It, it, th this is make or break now. Shit or bust. This is also I think and you know I, I've shied away from this all, all all through all through the season pretty much when there's pe been people kind of saying this kind of thing this is make or break for Carlos as well because if he cannot motivate the team and pick the right players and pick the right formation to go and win at Barnsley and to go and win at Rotherham then uh, unfortunately he's, he's, he's not going to be here any longer after that he won't be here next season if we if we can't win games like that and I, I you know I, I was walking with my mate John away from the game after Reading um, and for the first time I said I'm concerned now for Carlos I'm concerned because he, he's just not doing the business with players that should be good enough to do the business he's had two weeks now to work on it more than two weeks actually we've had two weeks and a day to work on it and um, it's, it's make or break you know this is it this really is it I think I think it's the first time I've actually thought about my brother said it about a month ago, call us out, you know, I don't see it any further. And I was like, Don't talk bollocks, you know. But I actually for the first time after that reading game, I was I it, it the, the doubt crept into my mind, is this man good I, I want him to be. I think we all do, but it is he. And I think we're about to find out. And I think one thing that is absolutely dun, dun, dun. needed. <laughs> that was very dramatic, Rich. Yeah. Thank you. I think we're to, yeah. Can we put some sort of advert in there? The Riverside Cafe's new outside bar. 
I think one thing that is certainly needed until the end of the season as well is for the fans to get behind the team. I know I'm going to bang my drum about it again and again and again and again, but the team do need us to help them push over the line now. So if you can, just for all those people out there that are Carlos out type people, just save it until the end of the season because nothing's going to happen between now and the end of the season. No matter how much you'd like it to, it's not going to happen. At the end of the season, fair play. But for now, just get behind the chuffing team. And if nothing else, we'll roll them on to the playoffs. And then we'll roll them through the playoffs if we need to. But please, we need to be all facing in the same direction for this. We are still six. We are having a cracking season, whether you like it or not. And if this is how we're playing badly, just imagine how we could play if we had that beautiful feeling back from last season mm. as well. Be, but, I'm talking to you, Rich. <laughs> no, I, 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 yeah. Directly at you. There, there isn't, there isn't a problem with this. The, um, the, we, we're talking about two away games. The atmosphere at away games is always good. The, there'll be The fans will be up for it against Barnsley. They'll be up for it against absolutely. Rotherham. This is the conversation we need to have in a week's time when we've got Newcastle at home. That's the one where there there's there's you know a potential problem that game looks like it's going to sell out we're going to have a full hillsborough four sides all, of hillsborough all four sides as well yeah. yeah no less so that's when we need the rallying call in a week because it's the home crowd that's the problem it's not the away crowd yes to be honest, i don't think we'll have a problem against newcastle because newcastle the will, will bring it us. yeah the geordies will bring it and we will we will get up for it when when we hear them singing uh, i have a question are they opening the vomitorium uh, on that day <laughs> <laughs> A piece of cheese in the corner. <laughs> is that what it's called, the vomitorium? Is that what we decided the well, back at the start of the season was? We were talking about no, that. It's a, it's a Roman, yes. Roman amphitheatre, isn't uh, it? Yes. The amphitheatre. Yes, that's what it is. That's what it is. Uh, but yeah, the Geordies <laughs> will will absolutely sell out the West End, and um, they, we will charge them fifty quid well, a ticket. Well, they won't, will they? They won't. We're having half in it. Are we? Yeah. We've, we've only given them like two and a half thousand. Only given them yeah. three thousand. Yeah. Two and a half, three thousand. And honestly, like I do think it's going to be the best game for it as well because Newcastle will come at us. We'll talk about this a bit more next week, but there will leave space behind them, and that's where we play our bestest football when chuffing teams aren't parking the buses. Whether you're celebrating a birthday, a wedding, or anniversary, maybe you've passed your driving test, or you've landed a new job. Well, whatever your reason for a party, the Riverside Cafe is the perfect location on Catch Bar Lane overlooking Hillsborough Stadium. To inquire about hiring us for your function, call 07989 856 054 or 0114 232 6121. Um, right then, chaps and chapettes, do you have any little bits for this evening? Uh, I do, I do, I do. Um, I just want to say a huge congratulations to Mike and Lorraine, who got married last weekend, um, and we didn't get a chance to shout out because, um, well, we didn't record a podcast, so we couldn't. Um, but huge congratulations. Mike is the guy that sent us the mankini photo. Really? What was What was that about? I can't... I think... Did he get married in the mankini? I don't think so. However... <laughs> I don't think it's any coincidence that he got married on the international break weekend. So make that what you will. <laughs> good lad. Good lad. Yeah, what, a lad. Good lad. what a lad. Very um, clever but chap. Huge congratulations to them and well done, Lorraine, because we've all seen him in a mankini. So high five. Um, unlucky. <laughs> yeah, we've only seen the promotional shots from your wedding night. <laughs> so yeah, have a good night, kids. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> any other little bits? I've, I've got. Um... Well, actually, I've only really got one, but I, I've got two just because I've just seen a, a tweet. This is nothing to do with uh, Wednesday at all, um, but I've just seen a, a tweet about how um, D- DiMaggio Wright Phillips, who's the son of Sean, um, has joined uh, his City teammate Tommy Doyle in the England under-16 squad. How Sean, Sean Wright Phillips is not that old, is he? What's he like, like mid-30s? And he's got a son that's old enough to be playing for the England under-16s. Is that Ian, Ian, Wright's Wright, grandson, basically. Ian Wright's a grandfather. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. I can't yeah, get yeah. my head around that. Um, as I said, it wasn't Wednesday related. Um, in, in slightly more relevant um, news. So we've obviously we've not done a podcast for um, a couple of weeks. And, and right at the beginning of that period, 
was when the the details of the planning application for what they want to do with the uh, the, the Leppings Lane end of, of Hillsborough came out. Um, I'm, I'm guessing you've all seen a lot of it. I did go through the application on the council website. A lot of it's very boring, but there is one photograph, obviously, which has done the rounds of what it's going to look like. Um, have, have you all seen it? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, any any thoughts? I think it looks a lot better. It's better yeah. than that dirty, dirty grey cladding we've got in a minute. It's got boobs. It does have boobs, Excellent. doesn't it? It really it does have. At, at some points, surely whoever it is that's designed this, who's kind of zoomed it, and you know, like you're doing your iPhone when you kind of pinch to kind of zoom in and out a little bit and think, ah, oh, that's right, yeah. And someone's gone, oh, hang on, you don't want to have it like that. It looks like it's got tits now. Um, but they've done it anyway. They've just thought, yes, yeah, on it, stick it in, because it does. It, it I has don't got... understand. We must have. We must have a graphic designer that has done that logo for us. How have they not gone? If you crop it there, it looks like it's got massive boobs. <laughs> Why haven't they just Fudge. removed the boobs? <laughs> you do that on purpose, though. Is, is Fudge not our graphic designer? Because clearly there's a reason that the boobs there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I quite like it. I, 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 you know, there was something about it that I, that I just quite enjoyed. But but now I've just realised that our badge has got tits and eyelashes. So um, <laughs> as Ozzy had a sex change. And uh, is that what's happening? A little bit ritual wanky behind the back of the West Standers. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Richard, you have to lower the tone. Good uh, Sorry. <laughs> yes, that's, that's, that's fixed job. <laughs> Pretty grim. Um, one other quick thing for me as well, which is um, just about the game on um, Saturday. So um, this, this is actually something that, that the Barnsley fans are doing. So there's a guy uh, who's a, a Barnsley season ticket holder, um, only 31 years old, a guy called Sean Leonard, um, who uh, died last week. Um, the Barnsley fans are organising a round of applause for him in the 31st minute of the uh, of the game. Um, obviously, they've kind of mentioned it to a, a, a few Wednesday fans, just uh, I think to ask us to respect it as much as anything. And I know that there'll be a few people that will be up for kind of getting involved in that, regardless of who supports who. Um, anyone that that passes away at the age of of 31, it's it's no age at all. So um, any Wednesday fans that are going to um, to that game, just be aware of um, aware of that. I, I'm going to be there. I'll certainly join in with um with that you know it's it, it, i i'm i'm you know 35 now um and i still feel young so um the thought of someone dying at 31 is um is, is just awful really so um yeah any fans that are there 31 minutes that's what's going to happen absolutely just have to be said as well that the uh the the, the round of applause for uh young scott marsden um, at the Wednesday game, and to be fair, the the United game as well was very, very well observed by uh, by Wednesday fans alike. So yeah, fantastic, well done, those chaps. Um, right then, boys and girls, um, Mr. Marriott, if people do want to find your nonsense online and find out where on earth you'll be uh, around Barnsley, as you are, it is your stomping ground, shall we say? Where can we do that? Well, there's a there's a, a there's a case in point here because I know Barnsley very well because I lived there for 25 years of my life. Um, I, I know that it's a bit rubbish when it comes to um, to pubs. So um, <laughs> I'll be doing my drinking in the Sheffield Tap on um, Saturday morning and then getting the train through to Barnsley at the very last minute. Um, so anyone else that's doing that then um keep an eye out and say hi um and um yeah if you want to follow my shenanigans on twitter i am at james marriott uh fudgy old bean if people want to find out of your twitter nonsense where can we do that yes you can find me on twitter at dan fudge moaning about how chris mcguire isn't a player we miss regardless of how many times he kicks one free kick in in about five years he is still a fat derby <laughs> counter reserve pick a day and have it off also chatting with my mate matt thorpe who's uh, at matt underscore thorpe 92 he uh, he has dubbed he's a blackburn fan and Lucas Zhao is now referred to as Black Jordan Rhodes, which I find very funny. <laughs> so you will you will hear me referencing Black Jordan Rhodes going forward. Oh dear! Um, uh, and uh, sort of non Wednesday related for you've been whipping out some videos of your uh, holiday excursions, which I found highly amusing. Well, <laughs> oh yes. So if you go to the hashtag a Dutch Odyssey, which is probably one of the worst hashtags anybody's ever picked, because I don't think a lot of people know how to spell Odyssey. Uh, that's all. <laughs> you know, that was always quite difficult um next time we'll just put dan's holiday. Dutch trip yeah, holiday. holiday yeah without the h uh, but i've got uh, i've got valarenga uh, i've got norway coming up soon and uh, i've also got a cruise so i'll be uh, i'll be doing various holiday based gags 
keep an eye on that. You might want to have a little look at the uh, the uh, What the Foe podcast, which is a uh, Wednesday night. There's a travel show as well. I think Budgie would be a marvellous guest. That'd be absolutely Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I'll be a guest. I mean, you know what I mean? It's just trending on my toes a bit with the content. But, you know, I, I'm, happy to, I'm happy to go and guest on, on other people's shows. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, Victoria, my darling, if you want to find you over there on Twitter, where can we do that, sweet pie? Uh, you can find me at Victoria1867. And I just need to give a quick shout out this week. Um, I'm a bit of a lover of complaining on the social medias. Oh. And I know, I know, believe it or not. And a, a couple of years ago, that worked in my favour because Direct Line got back in touch with me and were amazing. And honestly, if you need insurance, go to Direct Line. They were awesome. Um, but this well, week. Other insurance is available. Yeah, obviously. Um, but this week, um, they couldn't match my new insurance premium and blah, blah, blah. And then the woman replied to me, this girl called Han, um, and she said, um, how would you rate my service out of 10, 1 to 10, blah, blah, blah. P.S. We're all Wednesday, aren't we? So, high five, Hannah. Yes. High, fi- high five, yes. Direct Line. Yes, we are all Wednesday, aren't we? <laughs> and you can find me at Victoria1867. And working at the call centre at Direct Line on weekends. <laughs> yeah, why, what a ledge! Like, well, to be fair, here. she's clearly just gone through your tweets, and I mean, by virtue of the fact you've got eighteen sixty-seven in your in, in your handle, she's clearly gone through your tweets and stuck it in, so she gets a decent face. bit of feedback. However, your face. that is that is a lovely touch. Do you Thank know what you. I mean? <laughs> what what concerns me is if she sees any like racist gags on mine or something like that, and you know, yeah, how did you she, she how did you rate my you. service? And then just puts in some nineteen seventies black exploitation reference in there or something like that, uh. and you know, that that could, that, that, could, that could blow up on anybody's face. That. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Mr. Davis Old Bean, if people want to find you over there on the Twitter, where can we do that? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows. We don't know. <laughs> so if you want to find Mr. Davis over there on the Twitter, you can do that at um, Dicky Owl over there on Twitter, and I'm sure he'll be more than happy to receive your tweetage. Of course, if you'd like to find me over there on the Twitter, you can do that at Lord H. That's L zero R D underscore H. Get all the podcast at T W W Cast, and find us in all the usual places over there on the YouTube's, over there on the Facebooks, over there everywhere. Because we are an internet sensation, ladies and gents, and of course the website. It is still going as well. Uh, James, are you still receiving um, options for bloggage? Oh, boy. It's all gone very quiet on the uh, on the blog front. Perhaps slightly unsurprisingly with the fact that it, everything's been a little bit flat, hasn't it, at S6 over the, um, the last couple of weeks. Um, but, um, yeah, very much would welcome any blogs, any ideas for blogs. Um, anyone who wants to do a little bit of writing, you don't have to have done it before. If you want to discuss further, drop me a tweet at James Marriott or email james at the Wednesday week. .co.uk. Fantastical. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a pleasure as always. Thank you so, so much for joining us. I apologise for our tiredness, but, well, hopefully, we'll be back next week. Uh, be good, be safe, and we shall see you real soon. <laughs> my shenanigans on twitter i am at james marriott fantastical uh fudgy or bean why can we do that uh you will find Sorry, me oh bean yes hello. <laughs> i apologize that was the worst segue ever fudgy yeah. old oh boy if you want to find your nonsense over there on the twitter <laughs> where can we do that my friend <laughs> listen if you want to see me ask you <laughs> that was <Don't> funny. <laughs> hey, hey fudgy where can we do that <laughs> fudgy yeah. where can we do that Hey guys, welcome to some Saturday morning TV. 